Brian, Ro uh, Ro yeah, Brian Rockston. They're ready to go in a hurry here. Though, Out of the shotgun. And motion comes nearing. Uh, we're going to have a little illegal procedure, I do believe. Maybe a groachment they're talking. You it are is. right. So it'll be a five-yard penalty. First and five now for the Wildcats. Defensive backfield for the Norse, number 20, Jonathan Thorne, number 10, Brecken Cooley, and number 5, Eden Sasala. They'll be busy tonight. Wide open offense. Gonna hand off up the middle to, arm, uh, to Shramick, I do believe, and Shramick busts out across the 40 to about the 44-yard line. Pick up a six and a first down. Up eight yards. Get mark it. Get done marking it down. Up to the 44-yard line. We got a freshman in there at running back right now, I believe, number 24, Ethan Nisley. Keeping the football is Fremston. Fremston off the right side across the 43 out to about the. Yeah, about the 43-yard line, maybe the 44. We'll wait and see where they set it down. Give them a pickup of about five. It'll be second down and five. Can nicely in the backfield, I believe. In motion, number 25. Back to pass is Fremstead. Pump fakes. Now he gets some pressure. Now a penalty flag goes down as well. Right up the middle. Number 60. Uh, the tackle. Colton Sluga. Man, I declined this, wouldn't you? Back at the 34 yard line. That's a loss of 10 yards on the sack, I would guess so. Yep. Bring up a third down and about to 15 or so. So we're giving Fremstead a loss of 10 on that one. Yep. Jackson Shramick back in the backfield now. <laughs> and the umpire's picking up a slag. <laughs> Just in case he's got to throw it again. Triple receivers on the right side here. Single man up on the top. Now the shotgun quick pitch over to Shramick. Shramick tries to turn the corner. Not much happening there. Out to about the 38-yard line. Pick up of about four. We go fourth down and 11 in punting situation for the Wildcats. Dropping back deep is Devin McEwen and Jonathan Ford for Whitehall. Ryan Rock stood to punt here. Boy, that was almost blocked. Fair catch call for by Thorne at the 31-yard line. So it's 7.29 remaining here in this uh, first quarter. Why don't we get their second possession? Certain place they took over the last time. Yep. Game today brought to you part by Total Title Services, Vasio. They're serving uh, Jackson, Clark, Buffalo, Triple, and Chippewa Counties for all of your title work. So you get it all ser served up right so you can go <laughs> to the lawyers. <laughs> Got it right. Sorry, huh? -huh. Total Dial Services of Osseo. You sure don't like lawyers, do you? <laughs> I don't like trust anybody in a suit. <laughs> so, so, up under center. Hands it off the thorn right side. A bit of a hole there. He's out across the 35. Maybe the 37-yard line. We'll see when they unstack it all and everybody gets out of the way and they set down the football. Give him the 36. Pick up a five. We're second down and five. Game today brought to you part by Tri-County Communication Cooperative of Strumming Independence. For all of your communication needs, whether you're looking for a phone for your home, internet access, TV, cable, computers, they do it all. Tri-County Communication Cooperative of Strumming Independence. You and Spy split wide to the left. It's going wide to the right. In motion. 
Boy, that didn't Thorne. work. Thorne coming to motion back uh, towards the line of scrimmage, and he is sacked and right. Some, somebody was ready for that one, huh? Back at the 30-yard line, a loss of six. It'll bring third down and 11. Clock rolls with 6.34 remaining here in this first quarter. No, oh, I'm going to give him a loss of five on that one. I could have swore he's back at the 30, but hey, I'm a long ways away from the football. The guys in the tribes are always right, right? I don't know. Out of the shotgun. He's across the middle of the oh. queue and then the pass up and behind him and Fremstead with a solid hit. Makes an incomplete pass. Stops the clock with 6-10 and brings up a fourth down and 10. Back deep, number three, Gordon Coxling, and number 24, Ethan Nisley. You know, both sides have had a big negative play in each of these first three series, and it just doesn't help. No, it does not. It's hard to get any consistency. It uh, takes you out of your game plan. Devin McEwen to punt for the Norse. He's going to get this one up. Again, takes a bounce and up with it is Coxley up the left Ooh. side and he is smacked at about the 47 yard line so nine or uh, 559 remaining the budget of Wildcats will take over for their second offensive series Mr. Fremstead met him at the pass first and 10 at their own 47 yard line so they gained a little uh, there on that yeah exchange nice return a little dangerous maybe taking him on the bounce with white shirts right in front of you, but he Boy, turned out all right. Big stack of receivers on the left side for the Wildcats. Man in motion and the quick pitch outside to number 22. Nicely, nicely. We got flags all over. Outside here, inside there. Across the midfield stripe. We'll see what this is all about. Are we going to have offsetting penalties? Or I'm not sure. Holding. Well, holding. He didn't say on who. <laughs> I say I guess it's on Blurred. I don't know. Blurred Taylor, the way they're looking, yeah. You know, two holding, two holding penalties. Calls. In case you didn't get them the first time, we got you the second time. They like the penalty so nice, they did it twice. And here we go. Another series where, yep. Basically, put yourself in a hole before you get going. Spot from, from a spot of the foul, which is the 46, so it's going to make up a first and 21. Back in the backfield now, again, is Shromick once again, or is that nicely still? They both wear 20. 24 is on the sideline here, so okay. 22 must be out there. Shromick. Out of the shotgun, Femston takes the hand up, quick pitch across the middle. It's a nice grab by Colton Jet, uh, Jet uh, Letcher. So, picks up give him 36 to the 43, eight yards. Sinking down in about 15. Yeah, then he could only had six. Okay. <laughs> Premsta took a pretty good hit on that one. Pump fakes. Now he oh, he spun out of that. Out, well, the tackle there and then turns it upfield and is going to be brought down about the original line of scrimmage, possibly about the 47 48 yard line. That was pretty much all on his own, wasn't it? Yeah. Pick up out to the 48, so pick up of five. Okay. Third down about eight. Come to the line of scrimmage. Everybody gets set. Comes the back pass. It's up the screen. Oh, this it's looks like a good beat. Or oh, Shramick and Shramick up the middle is well, they, up quickly. I, I thought there was a lot more to gain on that, didn't you? Well, 48 to the 46-yard line of... Might also pick up a six to bring a fourth down and 
Long two, short three, whichever way your glass fills with 4.10 remaining. Looks like they might be going for it here, huh? I suppose. Fourth and about. Like you said, long two, very short three. From the two meters. Early. <laughs> <laughs> out of the shotgun. Ah, I think they're just barking, trying to get them to jump off sides. I think they'll just take the penalty and back them up five. No, they're going to take a timeout. They'll take a timeout. Talk about this and see if they want to go for it or punt or what they want to do. Tell you, this game today is brought to you in part by Falls Meat Service and Pigeon Falls. Um, if you're looking for lunch uh, or supper ideas, hot pork, hot beef, barbecues, meat, and cheese trays, not to mention all the great brats and all the good, <laughs> good stuff to go along with it, fresh ground hamburger, steaks, bacon, oh, bacon. <laughs> Meat Falls Meat Service in Pigeon Falls. I was thinking, you. Know, I heard a commercial the other day about 15 strips of bacon on a sandwich at a local place, and I can't remember where, but... I thought, I bet you Marty could go for that I sandwich. I could go for that. And today brought to you part by Nathan Sim, your local agent for Keller Williams diverse, uh, Realty Diversified for all of your real estate needs. He's born and raised in the area. Nathan knows all the good spots. So stop and see Nathan Sim, your Keller Williams Realty Diversified local agent. Looks like they're lining up to go for it again, Marty. Yes, they are. Trump. At least from this viewpoint, it looks like they are. Shramick from the in the backfield along with Fremstead. Fremstead out of the shotgun. Hand it off to Shramick up the right I side. I think he got it. And he's going to be. it's going to be close. Really, really close. Down to the 43-yard line. A three-yard pickup and a first down. First and 10 at the 43 of Whitehall. Clock at 341 and started up here once to get the chain set. Big play here early yeah. in the first, or late in the first quarter, but early in the ball game. Out of the shotgun as usual. Ooh, High nice snap. job. He, he from waits stud. for it to come down and looks for some help, and now he can't get rid of it, and he's going to be dropped back at his own 49-yard line. Or, yeah, 49-yard line, so loss of eight. Bring up a second down at 18. Clock rolling at 310. And again, you know, a penalty or a, or a big loss of a down, of, of yardage, it's it's hurt both sides here tonight. Hempstead back to pass again. All kinds of pressure, but he throws it down the right side. Line. Guys open. And he just overthrows Nearing. Uh, Nearing had got past the defense, but the pass was just a little bit long. Kind of reminds me of Monday night. Yeah, Rogers felt bad about that. He said, uh, was it Scanling? Fast, fast Scanling? He said he was open, and I missed him. I seen the – listen to the post-game <laughs> interview. Coach Dale down here is still shaking his head. <laughs> Stops the clock at 2.55 and brings up a third down and 18. Everybody look at their wristbands to see what the play is. Three receivers to the right side. Looks across the middle. Oh, oh nice defensive play there. Turn and see as it's. I think it's Sansala. It's a single number. Must be McEwen. I think it was number. Oh, five. it was Aiden Sansala. Number five, I believe. Who was the pass intended for? I forgot to look at that. It was intended for, I do believe, number two, Zachary Nitek. Who's about fourth down and 18 in a punting situation for the Blairdale Wildcats. We've Devin. had a lot of action between the 230s, haven't we? And <laughs> Devin McEwen and Jonathan Thorne back deep to receive the punt from Rockstead. It's an off. It's going to hit it about the 22-yard line, take a roll for the Wildcats, and roll dead close to the nice 15. Punt. Clock stops at 242. Uh, Waddle Norseman will take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Wildcats gained... Uh, we have penalty flag too, so. Oh boy. Face mask against. <coughs> That's the Norseman, so they, but they put it on. Was it before the punt? I don't know. We're discussing that right now. I don't think anybody else knew it except these two referees because they moved the first down markers and everything already, so. Exactly. So I think we're going to take it halfway to the, uh, halfway to the line. 
penalty is declined. Except about the 15 yard line. Maybe the 14. Looks like the 14, huh? It's inside the 15, so I, I will go with the 14, sir. And the Norse offense back out. Aiden Sala lead them out. They are a long ways away over there. Out of the shotgun. Up the middle, I think, is the quarterback, if I'm not mistaken, Sinsala. Takes it out to about the 16, maybe the 17-yard line. Give him the 17 to pick up a three. It'll be second down and seven. It wasn't the quarterback. Who was yeah. it? Number 20. Number 20. Got a direct snap. This time Sinsala takes it. Throwing. Goes down the middle and into double coverage overthrows. And for throwing Thorn overthrew him there. Stops the clock with 2.15 remaining first quarter. Third down and seven. Blair Taylor could definitely gain some field position on this if the Norse can't come up with the first down here. Been roading the way the field position for the one Norse uh, with every possession it seems like here. They started way deep this time at the 14. Have to get to the 24. They're at the 17. Out of the shotgun. Solid across the middle. Oh, that was almost caught and then almost intercepted. Again, it was intended for Thorne, I do believe, incomplete. So to bring up a punting situation with 2 11 remaining first quarter, fourth down and seven. I ate my Snickers already. <laughs> Back deep, it's number three. Gunnar Goxling and number 24, Ethan Nisley, to receive the punt from Devin McEwen. Right in the snap, back at about his five yard line. Is McEwen. Gets it off. Gonna go over to Nisley. Hit it about the midfield strip, go to bounds. So with 2.04 remaining here in the first quarter. Player Taylor will get the football back. Back uh, out of bounds at the 40. I'll put the football down. Thank you very much. So the 47. I guess you could call this a defensive struggle. Would that be fair? They moved it back to the 48 yard line first and 10. Back out the offense. Neither one of them been too potent here in this not, first quarter. Not in this first quarter. Friends to the quarterback out of the shotgun. Shramick to his right. Quick pitch out to him. Oh, 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 oh. Football's loose. I think we got by the Norseman. Shramick with a fumble. It's covered by number 56, Wiley Dunn. Fumble with 159 remaining here in this first quarter. The first turnover. First and 10 at their own 48. Aiden and Salo bring them to the line of scrimmage. I believe this is the best position Waddle's had all night, isn't it? I believe so. I formation behind him. Hand off to Thorne, left side. Out across the midfield stripe. About the 49 yard line of Blair Taylor. Pick up a three, it'll be second down and seven. Eric Kleinheins looks like he's gotten quite a bit larger from last year. He does, I noticed that. They got listed at 6'1 and 185. He looks a little bit. Mm, I think that's before he ate supper or put his shoes on. <laughs> he's running out of the fullback spot. Jonathan Thornton at the halfback spot. On the slot. Of course, since Helen and Thorne are pretty small guys on each side of him there, so that may make a difference. The motion goes going. The handoff to Thorne again. Right side, there's a big hole that time until the 45. Down close to the first down territory. The 43-yard line, 44, somewhere around there. We're waiting for this, the officials to set the football down. It's going to be the 44-yard pick of a six, and it'll bring up a third down and one. Clock rolling, 56 seconds remaining. I believe Whitehall's still looking for their first first down of the game. 
There's not been very many of them in the game, period. I think Blair Taylor has one for sure. Third and one here. And up to Thorne again, left side. He fumbles the football. It's loose on the ground. And uh, covering it up. 56. Well, the offensive lineman, Wiley Dunn, he recovered the fumble the first time, recovered the fumble the second time. At the 41 yard line. So they pick up seven yards on the play. I don't know who gets to give the pick up there, if it's Dunn or if it's. I give it to the team. Yeah. Make up first and 10 at the. 41-yard line of Blair Taylor. Clock at 14 seconds and running. Sala out of the high formation. Drops back to pass. Looking, looking, now getting some pressure. And throws Drop it at it. offensive lineman. And that'll be an illegal forward pass. <laughs> With an illegal receiver. Tried to get it to Matika, and Matika's going, I got the wrong color no, number number uniform on. Of course, they can't tell in the NFL anymore, but. <laughs> Legal touch. So lost it down. And it'll be, where is it marked at? And I'll mark it there. Where? I'm going to mark it off. It's going to be. 10 yards. Oh, just back to the line of scrimmage. So it's not actually it's just a, a loss of down. down. Yep. No, they're they're saying. Okay. That, right, Wait a minute. Blair Taylor's going, ah, uh, just a second. And I think there has to be something marked off there. Five, Five yards. yards. We're going to take it down in 15. Two seconds remaining here. I think this is the last play of the, hat, of the quarter. Did they start it up after the flag? I don't think. I can't remember in high school. Sometimes the, the rules are a little different from everybody else. The officials still aren't exactly sure what's going on here. I think they got it figured out now. It'll be marked when they snap it. It'll go out of the shotgun is in Salah. Back to pass. It looks like they're setting up a screen. Boy, nice. Or to, uh, to Kleinheins. Kleinheins, and He's dropped close to the midfield stripe back at the 49. That's a loss of three yards. Well, that's, they haven't set it down yet. Or are they moving it on the they're end moving of the quarter? It. That's the end of the first quarter. Jeez. Loss of what? <laughs> what did you go with, Marty? Loss of six. When we go back, it'll be uh, third and long for the yeah. North. Listen to high school football on WHTL. Third down and 18. The, 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 the marker guy's trying to mess with my head. He'd be awfully bored with it. So coming far to the white right side is Cooley for Whitehall. We're still having a discussion where the football should be, where it shouldn't be. I think we're ready now. Maybe. So it's all out of the shotgun. Looking, looking, comes down across the middle and overthrows everybody intended for McEwen. And a fourth down and long. Almost got a punt here, don't you? And oh, 
Oh, Try to pin him. Yeah. Pin him back. You got to get that field position here. Well, just for your information there, Mr. Little, uh, Whitehall ran 13 plays for 9 yards, and Blair Taylor ran 11 plays for 19 yards in that first quarter. So we had a grand total of uh, 28 yards. We had a Goxling and uh, Ethan nicely back deep again for the punt from uh, Devin McEwen. Off the side yes, of his foot. Yes, they should have went for it. Yeah. That's going to roll. <laughs> Kickoff, you can do that, Mr. Thor. Not on a punt. For the 41, so it'll be an eight-yard punt. So at 11.43 remaining in the half, it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at their own. As soon as they set the football down, we'll let you know. Okay. It's going to be the 41, like I thought. But these guys ain't real decisive, are they? You're being kind. In front, so to bring them to the line of scrimmage. Shramick in the backfield with him. They must have split apart. And Ooh. Gets hit hard up the middle. Is that done again? I think so. Number 60. Oh, Colton Sluga. Back they got to protect that boy. 35. Loss of what, six, seven? We'll wait until six. Late. Six? Second and 16. He got hit hard he got there. Hit hard. That was that was. A he avoided done, and, and Sluga said, hello. <laughs> Sluga come free. I mean, they, he had a straight to the big rush coming here. No, that's got to be intentional grounding. No, there's a receiver right there. Who? 22. Oh, all I seen was 55. No. He not a receiver. Tromick was there. It was thrown into the ground to get no mistake about it, but okay. technically with the receiver there. He was close enough yeah. that it hit at his feet. But it does bring up a third down and long. 16. Mm-hmm. Comes across the middle. Oh, he and almost had it. Another good defensive bay from Aiden Sansala. Knocked it away. Was that Neetech again? Yeah. Heck of a job on the defensive end there. Uh, or the defensive back spot. And I don't think you can blame Neetech on that one. It just He just got hit. It got stripped. Like you said, it was a good defensive yeah. ball play. Uh, play on the ball. McEwen to the near side. Thorne to the far side. Roggs did the kick for, punt for Blair Taylor. Wow, so nice little, job yeah. by Mr. Rungstead. A little scoop job going to hit the 30, or at the 40, and bounce inside the 30, down to about the 26-yard line. Big roll there for Rungstead, so with 10.50 remaining. In this first half, the Waddle Norris get the football back, first and 10 at their own 26, I think. And once again, Blair Taylor is winning the field possession battle. So once again, Whittle bringing him up to the line of scrimmage offensively. It's been a lot of offensive series, but not a lot of action. A lot of uh, some good defense. I mean, yeah. you got to give credit where credit is due, but the offense has not been real intimidating so far to this point. Affirmation behind Zasala, he might be calling an option there. Instead, hands it up the middle to the fullback, Kleinhans and Kleinhans, maybe a yard. They unstack a whole bunch of blue and white. Uniforms in one spot. Pick of a yard up to the 27. Second down in nine. Clock at 10:29 and running. Game today brought to you in part by Central Builders Supply, Independence, Galesville, and Thorpe for all of your building supply needs, hardware needs. They also rent some equipment as well. Central Builders Supply, Independence, Galesville, and Thorpe. Second and nine for the Norse from. Wow, three receivers spread out. Pitch it back to Kleinhans on the left side. He rumbles to the outside. And I, I don't think he got back to the I line of scrimmage. Got back, he got dropped back at the original line of scrimmage. Man, lost the yard, the gain, and we'll wait and see again. For him to put it down. Now they're giving him no gain. No gain, so it'll bring up third down and nine. And today brought to you in part by Colby Hometown Pharmacy. What I'll stop down there and 
see all the friendly faces down there. They listen to us religiously down there. Uh, I go, every time I go in to get my prescription, they're listening to us. Call me hometown pharmacy. Why don't get all that great hometown value and the great friendly service. Solid back to pass out of the shotgun. Looking, looking, comes down the left side. McEwen goes up and Boy, there was saying three play. blue shirts around him. Him and Fremstead went up at the same time to go get it. And uh, down with it came no one. <laughs> Stops the clock with 9.26 remaining to bring up a fourth down and nine situation. For those of you watching this game, if you love defensive battles, you're in for a treat tonight. Gunner, Gunner Costling and Ethan Nisley back deep again for the punt from Devin McEwen. Now, he can't have a punt like the last one. Not here, anyway. Nope. Eight yard punt will not suffice at this point in time. And he gets off a much better punt. Bounce too nicely at about the 38 up the right left side. There you go. Uh, out of bounds at the 47. And he, he can get hit. a whole bunch more added on. Got hit out of bounds and they'll add on another 15. So they're gonna get a nice field position with 9.16 remaining in the half. That was, you know, sometimes you're on the edge, you know, but this one, he took a full <laughs> step out of bounds before he even made contact. Whoa, whoa, what are we? They pointed towards Blair, that can't be, towards Blair Taylor, that can't be right. Yeah. I'm watch off the 15 yards. First right on the 35. 35 yard line. Oh, what all? First and 10. Kane Fremson will bring him to the line of scrimmage. All ready to roll. Stromick, the lone back in the backfield. They hand it off to him, tries the right oh, side. Out. There. Oh, there was a hold. There's a whole bunch see of it, bodies so. everywhere there for what all. There's just a wall of white. He's going to lose back to the 33. Loss of two to bring him second down and 12. Yeah, you got to give him a loss of three there, okay. but it's on the 38. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. My the, eyes the, deceive the, me. The, well, no, they're not. The yard markers are not correlating with the uh, I get so confused where, with where they're putting the ball much. The third, uh, second and 13. Comes to back to pass, getting some pressure. Now he'll step up. And oh. And he'll be he's up at about the 40 yard line. Marty, he's going to need a hot bath. In a hot, he lost another yard, yard, huh? That wow. 39. That boy's taking a beating. But they're down and 14. You know, sometimes yeah. the quarterback gets hit or glanced and he goes down. Fremstead's getting hit. <laughs> Out of the shotgun. Third and 14. For the Wildcats. Back to pass. The pressure again. Rolls out to the right side and more pressure. Ducks through that. Oh! Turns to the left side. Now he's got some room out here. He gets to the 35 and is wrapped up by Jonathan Thorner at about the 32 yard line. Picking up about uh, uh, yeah, 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 seven yards. Fourth down I'll go with you on seven. I can live with that. Fourth and seven. They're in a the, the two-down situation here. Uh, Fourth-down situation where they're going to go for it here. The 33-yard line of what all? Third and eight. Looking downfield, Fremstead comes across the middle and it's incomplete. Oh, you know, that's a late, a late flag. flag. Wow. But if you watched it, if, if you could see that he was grabbing for it and he, he was missing it. <laughs> the elbow was going, but there was no flag coming with it. I'm not sure if it was a pass interference. I'm not saying that, but just that's why the flag came out of the late. Day. Okay. He is reaching for it. It wasn't of cooperating. Here we have 15 yard penalty. Be first and ten. Down to the. Wendell has more penalty yard yards than the two teams combined have yarded to this quarter. 
at the 18 yard line. First and 10. 7.09 remaining here. Deepest penetration oh. by this one. Nice hands by Fremsted to go Very and get good that catch one. of it. And they've got a yard, maybe two. We'll wait and see where they spot that football. Two? One and a half? <laughs> Give him one. Okay. Second down at nine. I mean, start at the 18, he's at the 17. So. My my adding if my adding's right if my that should be correct then if my ciphering's good I concur <laughs> there they moved back the yardstick the yard the the yard marker the chain gang is not working with the uh, pass across did the he middle. catch that yes, I think did. Scoyan deflected that down to the ten yard line whoever it was in that thirty eight that is the tight end uh, Devin Naring down to giving him four five four five. Four. Thank you. Third and about five. Short five, long four. It's that situation again. For some reason, I thought he gained more than that. 13-yard, 14-yard line. Hand off to Shramik. Oh. Two Norse meeting. 44 was the first one to make contact. That is Brock Sluga. And then 52. Was in there as well, Mr. Dunn. Or 56, Mr. Dunn, excuse me. Pick up of nothing, nothing. Fourth down and four. Fourth and four from the 11, 12 yard line. 11 and a half, 12, somewhere on there. I'm still going to pass, getting chased, getting chased. <laughs> getting chased some more. Throws the football. Oh. And we got penalty flags down and incomplete pass. And we'll see what that's all about. It's back way back at the 34 yard line. So if you're what, do you take if the penalty is against them? Do you take it? Make I because gonna wait and see because I have no idea. I know you get the football if you decline it, but you're gonna get deep in your own territory and. Well, if it's intentional grounding, it would be loss of down and spot of the foul or of the throw. No. But we're not sure that's no, what not, it. No, not. Oh, well, we got school. holding. It's not high school. They declined it. Where are they going to put the football? They're kind of wandering around out there. I've, I've seen. I've seen. People with more, more definition where they're going in, in, in nursing homes <laughs> and these officials. These guys are lost out there. It's like, oh, we're going to ramble over this way somewhere. I think there's a football field here. Okay, let's come back this way. There we are. Okay, there it is. You do not want to criticize people, but these boys are really having a rough night, aren't they? It's, like it's going to be the 12-yard line when all – is finally said and done. No, no, they haven't come back out and snapped the ball yet. I'm <laughs> waiting. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> our game today brought to you part by Arcadia Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Stop and see Matt Hughes and the folks there by the river in Arcadia. New and used vehicles, great service department. That 15-minute quick change, oil change, you're guaranteed in 15 minutes without an appointment. You're in and out of there. Arcadia Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Stockman's Farm Supply, more in Osseo. Get on up there. They got... Apple cider. Oh, yummy. Oh, I, like I, I had a nice talk with Jerry today up there. They got a lot. Mums. If you're into mums, they got hundreds of them out in front of the store. A little oh. apple cider warmed up with a cinnamon stick. And oh, there you go. <laughs> they also got a whole bunch of pumpkins and gourds up there. Oh, Stock, my gosh. Stockman's Farm Supply. All, all the Osseo. way from the little ones, three for a buck, <laughs> to the ones that are 10, 20 bucks a piece because it takes more than one guy to carry them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Our buddy Jerry up there was having a lot of fun when I was talking with him today. <laughs> So Whitehall takes over first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. You think I'm hyper. He puts me to shame. <laughs> and Zala out of the shotgun. Flap it out on the side to Thorne. Thorne cuts back um, across the, to the, about the 14-yard line maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, there, he got forward and then he got slapped backwards and then he was... Uh, looks like the 15, doesn't yeah, it? Pick up three. Two, three, okay. And down in seven. Yeah. Look 
around. Back to pass. Looks downfield. Throws it. Oh, he there. had it there. Who was it? I think that might McCune. Have been incomplete. He hit him in the hands. It's a heck of a place to hit a wide receiver right in the hands. He might have been gone if he'd hung on to that one. He had a yard on the defensive back. Third and eight. They're going right at it again. I'm not even going to bother to huddle there. Expect that from Blair Taylor, not from Whitehall. Third. Back to pass. Zala. It's out on the flat out here. And there's a catch by Scoyne, I do believe. Runs Ooh. through a man out to the 35-yard line. So pick up a 20 yards and a first down for the Norse. And that is by far the biggest offensive play we've seen tonight. On either side. Yep. And uh, Blair Taylor may be lucky because the kid launched himself. He That could have been a, I don't know if it's targeting or what you call it in high school, but he launched himself. And uh, it's one of the few times I can say in the NFL that would have been a penalty. <laughs> There's a and loss of a yard for Kleinheins. Kleinheins. Bring up the second down. Well, they're going to give him no game. Okay. Second and ten. Had to lose something because they started on the 40, 35 and that's behind the 35. I don't know. Never mind. Solid back to pass comes off on this left side. And I expect it for a thorn and broke up by Frumstead. That was. I get number 10 back there. Colton Lutcher. A lot of contact. A lot of contact. Stop the clock with 3.53 remaining. And, you know, I've learned a lot, Marty, over the years working with you, regardless of the sports. All you're looking from the officials is consistency. I mean, you learn how to play what is a foul, what isn't, yeah. what is holding, what isn't. And, and sorry to say, we really haven't seen that tonight. Third and ten. Yeah. Silent on the shotgun, back to pass, gets some pressure, comes up to McEwen, and McEwen he stops caught it. and comes and gets the football at the 46-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 and a first down for the Norse. Nice job of catching the football from his derriere. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he cut back and dropped to get it or if his feet went out from under him and he caught it, but it looked good. <laughs> first attempt, their own 46. Back to pass, pump fakes, goes down the right side. Oh, he's, he's there got if he's got him. Oh, just, just overthrew him. The old stop and go. And he had him. Stops the clock with 3.32 remaining here in this first half. We are scoreless. Here today brought you apart by the Lions Banks. They're located in Osseo, Mondovi, Gilmanton, Cochran, Bluff, Siding. They have all kinds of stuff for you there as far as checking, savings, uh, uh, whatever, loans, business loans. They do it all. Lions Bank, Osseo, Mondovi, Gilmanton, Cochran, and Bluff, Siding. Time out taken by the Norse? Yes, sir. Okay. That gives me time to tell you about Moles Insurance in Whitehall. Jason, Michelle, Audrey. And Greg. No, no, Greg's not there Greg's anymore. Greg's not there um, anymore. That's one. That's on me. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> okay. Minus Greg. We'll do it with Jason, Michelle, and Audrey then. How's Thank that? you. <laughs> Get your insurance needs. Bring in your insurance. Uh, they'll compare and look around and see what they can yeah, do. Yeah, you know, Jason's he, good like about Jason that. Like Jason said, if, he, if, I don't, if I can't do better, you know. You don't have to worry about it. Stop and see my most insurance of Whitehall. Stetzer Electric in Blair. Dave does great work on electric motors, whether it's uh, – Commercial or residential electric motors, he has the scoop on them. Stetzer Electric of Blair Call, 989-2571. Riverland Energy Cooperative, them boys, they was busy here with that tornado going through Monday on Monday night. night up by Strum up there. But they uh, got the electricity back up and running fairly quickly over there for the damage that was done. Riverland Energy Cooperative. And Midwest Natural Gas of Independence for all of your natural gas needs. Here we right there on Highway 21 on the east uh, the northeast side of Independence there, Midwest Natural Gas. Second and 10 for the Norse at their own 46-yard line. 3.32 remaining in the scoreless first half. There's a pass across the middle for Scoyne behind them incomplete. They blitzed. They had to do something yeah. because uh, Whitehall had kids open, and uh, they just hadn't completed it. It's going to bring up a third down situation for the Norsemen. They gave that tornado an F zero that went through up the strum. Oh really? <laughs> I thought it did. It must have been a little bigger because it took out that barn completely. It was there was a few buildings level that I seen on uh, social media. It's the level one. Come on. 
Out of the shotgun again, third down and 10. This is how high snap goes down with it. Thorne down the right side, keeps the catch, down the right sideline to the 10 to the five and into the end zone for the touchdown from 54 yards out. I think we had uh, defensive pass interference here too. He was holding on for dear life because Thorne was stepping away from him. And he broke away from the hold even, huh? <laughs> really, really. I mean, if you're going to hold him, you, gotta, you, you can't let him catch it. So the score is six to nothing. And the extra point attempt coming from, uh, I do believe, Devin McEwen. Out of the hold at number 12, Seth Lambeck. Lambeck. Which doesn't surprise me, man. Uh, played baseball, he had good hands there. Played basketball, he had good hands. <laughs> Not surprising. I'll watch him drop it. <laughs> he didn't jinx him. No, oh, kick on the way up. And the kick is good, good. and it's 7 0 the lead for the Norseman. Kickoff coming up on WHTL. Really didn't think you'd see this, did you? Why else? I'll throw him. <laughs> Three runs and 10 passes so far in the quarter for the Norse. How long was that drive? How many plays was that drive? Oh, Nine. I'm sorry, Marty. I do not know. It's been a well, they had the 20-yard pass on it, so I think it was seven or eight. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not I sure. I got nine. It could be. I'm okay. not going to argue because I did not keep track of it. Nine plays, 88 yards. Five seconds to so a minute 55. Welcome back to Blair Taylor Schools as the uh, Weddell Norseman go 88 yards, nine plays, a minute 55 off the clock score, and a 54-yard touchdown pass from Aiden Sinsala to Jonathan Thorne. Extra point by Devin McEwen, 7 to nothing. Kicking off with Weddell will be number 44. Sluga, isn't it? I don't have a 44. Yeah, it's got a dual number. Oh. Brock Sluga. Okay. Ooh, ooh. One, one bounce is one. To the deep man, the right side. Oh, 22 and brings it out across. Looks like he's across the 30 somewhere there. We'll wait. We'll uh, wait. Number five, Colton Bouch. And that's up to the. I'd say the 31. 31. Can't be right. We agreed. <laughs> <laughs> So 5-13 remaining here in the first half. The trailer trailing 7-0. They have the football. First and 10. At their own 31-yard line. They got to give Mr. Friendstead some time, whether it's handing off or passing here. He's, oh, nice. Oh, somebody closed it in a hurry there, didn't they? There and it was filled quickly by three white shirts. I think leading the way was number 42. Uh, Klein Hans. Gain of a yard. Pick up second down and nine. And timeout taken by the Weddell Norseman. In today brought to you Papa Tractor Central in Arcadia. Your John Deere headquarters there where they're looking for the big machinery for the field or just the garden tractors or the smaller tractors for a hobby farm or snow blowers this time of the year. <laughs> yeah, we got to start thinking about that, don't we? <laughs> yeah, Tractor Central, Arcadia, Mondovi, and Durand. Days Escape, Salon, Spa, and Pigeon Falls. Now, they can do wonders, Sarah, Trinity, and Kylie, but not for us. Yeah. Yeah, we they, might challenge they, they them. They have to have something to start with. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they'd be out of luck with us. Stop and see them, though. They'll get you that new look for the coming fall season, Days Escape, Salon, and Spa, and Pigeon Falls. Second and nine for the Wildcats. Their own 32-yard line. 3-0-1 remaining in this first half. 7 to nothing. 1-0 with the lead. Back to pass. Fremston comes down the left side to knee tack. And no face guarding in high school, nope. is there? Nope. And back. Sinzala did the play, but 
He has no, as you said, no face guarding in high school football. You can do that all day long. So. Stops the clock with 2.55. Blair Taylor back up to the line of scrimmage very quickly. And that no huddle with the wristband stuff. That's becoming oh so popular. Very much so. That's why I like watching the Badgers. <laughs> two running backs, two odd receivers, a tight end, and you huddle up and you call your play. They've done pretty well the last 25, yeah. 30 years doing that, though. So. Stood out. Again on the fly pass oh. on the left side, and it's caught out there by number 38. That was Evan a nice catch. Herring. From the 32 to the 30. Five, 35, so 18, 18, and 15, 33 yards. First and 10 for the Wildcats. That, that was good off. coverage, yep. too. They had two guys there, and, I mean, it was a great throw and catch. It's one of those where they yeah, drop it in the bucket, they say. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I can go with that. Nice play. First and 10 at the 35 of Wedo. Hurry up, Drew. Go with Drew Grow. Our former buddy, Drew, working <laughs> on the TV crew. Running the camera along the field there. Trumped it back to run pass, gets some pressure, and throws it on the flat there incomplete. Starting to move him around a little bit and try to get him some time back there. Well, if you want him to be around to play the second half, you're going to have to. <laughs> that young man's taking four or five pretty good wallops. Clock stops with 218 remaining here in this the first half. I mean, I remember you saying that's a quarterback, you know, hit. Yeah, he went down. That's not the case with Mr. Yeah. Fremstead tonight. He's being hit pretty hard. Second and 10 for the Wildcats. Again, out of the shotgun, trip receivers to the right side. Everybody stops, looks at the wristbands. Whoa. That was the snap. There's a, a hold. I had a whole jersey full, handful of jersey there. Left side, and as they come around, I think he's going to lose a yard. I'll wait and see again. Until they set that their football down, we can't really say. You don't go by. Yeah, a loss of one. Third down and 11. Mr. Fremstead with seven carries for one yard this quarter. Ouch. Well, that's actually an improvement because he had eight, four carries for minus eight yards in the first quarter. <laughs> now with a shotgun. Clock stopped at 2.12. Back to pass. He's going to run again. Whoa. Pulls up and fires. Oh! The through the hands of Nearing again. You know what? That's one where you got to help your quarterback out. Don't clock you? Clock at 2.06 and fourth down and 11 at the 36-yard line. Looks like they're going for it, Marty. Didn't they just move it back to the 37 now? Yes, they did. <laughs> Wait a minute. How did he lose yardage on, on an in incomplete pass? I don't get it. Mm -mm. I confused. You're not alone. There's a whole bunch of us up here that are right there with you, buddy. Another <laughs> well, shotgun, fourth down. Getting some pressure. Now he's going to come to the left oh, side. He's going to try chance. to run it. And uh, he's going to go up short. short. I don't know about the 28 to 29 yard line. How many yards are they going to give him on that one? He was I at the 36. Six. I have to wait to see, but they haven't put the football down yet. I'm going to stop the clock with a minute 58. And down to the 28, so a pickup of eight. So with the 158, the Norse get the football back, their own 28 yard line, leading seven to nothing. I think they've got one timeout. No, they got no timeouts left. Okay. Split twin receivers to the left side. Q and the single receiver to the right. Split backfield behind Sinsala out of the shotgun. Back to pass, looking, looking, looking. Comes across the middle to McEwen. Taps it up in the air, grabs it. Across the 40, out to the 45, spins. And it's brought down around the 47-yard uh, line. Pickup of 19 and a rip a... First and 10 at their own 47 yard line clock stops while they set the chains at 147. 46 yard line. Whatever. First and 10. 
They start the clock. Sinzala. Back to pass. Looks. Comes across the middle from Scoyne. Tended him. for Scoyne a little bit behind him. Yep. Yeah, he almost threw that one to the wrong side. Golden Lecter was there. It was okay. the guy in the other jersey that almost got it. Stop the clock and allow them to huddle up. Game today brought to you part by Lindbergh Plumbing and Pumps. Well, Randall Lindbergh and folks here can help you out with all of your plumbing needs. Uh, whether you have a stuffed uh, leaky faucet or clogged drain or pump pressure pressure tank blows up. They do it all. Limber plumbing pumps the weather. Second and ten. That one, that's going to stick with me for a while. They run a little reverse to Thorne. Thorne to the outside. Gets around one man. He's still the midfield stripe into uh, Wildcat territory. From the 46 to the 41. So that's a pickup of, what, 15? Okay. And they wind the clock again with what? Minute 18, 19? 41 yard line of Blair Taylor. It's called back to pass, first and 10. It's on this left side. And yes. picked, picked off by Kane Frumstead. Frumstead up the right side of the 30, 35. Penalty flags go flying. And that'll bring it back on the run back, but it will be, the interception will stand. Kane Frumstead with the interception, and then on the run back, the uh, illegal Brock. So 103, they'll get it back, and I'm going to guess they're just going to want to maybe kind of sort of run the clock out here. We'll it's know in a few minutes. Back them up inside their 30-yard line. So they're Ended having quite a discussion about this again. And today brought to you in part by the Katie Credit Union. Stop and see them tomorrow. Big shredder day, right? Mike and I will be up there, yes, Free sir. Free shredding up the three boxes or three bags. I believe so. Bring in all of the documents you want to get rid of, and they'll shred them up for you. For free. We have explanation, 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 because it's a post-turnover penalty, right? So I, I would think so, but, Marty, I don't say a lot at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these guys, I'm not sure either. <laughs> I just, <laughs> well, just wait. They're talking to the Coach Kleinhans. If it's after the interception, it's got to be pretty cut and dry. You take the penalty, don't you? I would think so. Now he's going to come all the way across the field and talk to the folks from Blair Taylor. How come they're setting the football down at the 40-yard line? I'm confused. I'm I, completely confused. Here's where you need, uh, like we had, uh, what was it, last week or two weeks ago, where you got the uh, umpire with a microphone on him. Because they threw the penalty flag, and the penalty flag. There was two or three flags down. In the lack of the back. Dead ball foul, personal foul. Uh, offsetting. Okay. I said there was more than one flag. Well, I was right on that. That explains it then. Maybe. So they offset and they just take the football at the 40 yard line. And we got a minute three. Now that changes the situation completely. Perhaps it out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Shromick. Shromick up the middle. Yeah, across the midfield stripe to the 45-yard line or close to. Scoyan saved their, I don't know if he would have gone all the way, but 22, right? The ball carrier? Yeah. So that's a pickup of 15 yards and a first down. 45-yard line of Weddell. Clock rolls with 50 seconds remaining. Frumstead comes to the left side. Now he's going to run the football. Ain't going to get out of bounds. A nice job by scoring not to hit him. Yes. Oh, they're going to call aye, him. Aye, aye, aye. I saw he tried to get a stop from he him. He did hit him. It was in bounds, too. Yeah. The officials talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. Did a flag go down? Yeah, there's one sitting at the okay. 40-yard line. I, I didn't see it, and yeah. I can't see it now. There's too much blue in the way. 
Marwa 15 yards from the 45, 40 to the 25 yard line. That's 45 yards and penalties this quarter for the Norse. Twenty-six-yard line. Forty-three seconds remaining. Rams dead. Now well, the shotgun looks. Now he's getting some pressure. Lost the, the ball. Oh, he got it. Falls back on it. Back at the thirty-yard line. Lost here, four to be second down and 14. They have to take a timeout with 34 seconds remaining. In the half, seven to nothing, Whitehall leading. Again, today brought to you in part by Gunnarsson Tri County Rehabilitation Services of Whitehall, your full physical rehabilitation center. Or as we like to call it, WHTL North, because we've all been there. <laughs> 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 One More than there. once. <laughs> Gunnarsson Tri County Rehabilitation Services of Whitehall. The Osseo Automotive Group, which includes uh, Rudy's of Whitehall, Osseo Ford, Nels Gunnarsson, Chevrolet of Osseo. And now Fountain City forward as well. Stop and see Hanson, the folks down there in Fountain City, downtown Fountain City, as a matter of fact. The Osseo Automotive Group. Also brought to you by Synergy Co-op of Strum, where crops are king and they're busy harvesting. Ah, uh, yeah, they're going to be taking samples and moisture and all. Them. Oh, my gosh. And then they'll be they're spreading fertilizer as soon yeah. as that's off. You're in close to I know it's got to get close to being able to shell pretty soon. Too. I talked with a guy here over uh, just past Blair on 95, and he said they had chopped a bunch, and they were doing what they call snaplage, where they just uh, pick the corn and then smash it up and put it in bags or a silo. I think theirs was going in a bag, but he said they had just tried it, and it was just about ready. Yeah. So shelling ain't far behind. Nope. Second and 13. From the 29-yard line. Throw across the middle. Wide open. Wide open is number 38. Nearing in for the touchdown from 29 yards out. 29-yard touchdown pass. Makes it 7-6. In favor of Wido. Extra point. He must, must kick because Fremstead's over unless he's talking to the coach getting a play. I think he might be getting the play. What do you think? I think so. I'm not sure they do a whole lot of pace place kicking. Nearing with the score. And now the two-point conversion. <laughs> Penalties have just killed White all in this mm -hmm. quarter. Off to Shramick, left side. Oh! He is. He got depleted. <laughs> that was a depleter. That was Klein Hans. <laughs> Just you stop here. <laughs> Kickoff coming up on WHDL. Welcome back uh, to Blair Taylor Schools as the Waddle Norseman goes 60 yards, four plays, uh, 35 seconds off the clock. Score on a 29-yard touchdown pass from uh, Keem Fremstead to uh, Evan Nearing for the score for the Wildcats. The extra point, uh, no good. So it's 7-6, the lead for Whitehall here at halftime. Just 28 seconds remaining. They will get the football. On the kickoff here from Blair Taylor. Number five, Colton Bouch to kick off for the Wildcats. Colton Bouch to pick kick off. No, well, I think we're going to. Uh, yeah. And Blair Taylor does get the second half kickoff, don't yeah. they? That could be huge. One oh. too many guys out there. They went, Wait a minute. That looks like, yeah. They're all scrunched up. And 
charge the football. And no, they're not going to try the onside kick. Rockstick going to kick off instead. Come to Thorne, get it on that reverse to uh, number 12. Up the left sideline is that would be uh, Seth Lambeck. About a boy, they're into blur territory. Thirty-five yard return there, huh? All right, yeah. About Twenty yard line, he picked it up. I uh, got the, re the reverse out to the forty-seven yard line of Blair Taylor. So twenty seconds remaining. There in the Blair Taylor end of the football field. Chance to take a couple of shots downfield here. Yeah, I think that's probably what the game plan is. I'd have to agree with you. Split three receivers to the right side. Way out here on the end is number 10, Kulig. Sala. For the back out of the shotgun. Bounce back to pass. Throws across the middle. Intercepted by off. Washington. Washington with the interception, and he'll pick it off. Bring it back into Whitehall territory. Sure, because I had my stats for Blair Taylor all done through halftime. <laughs> of course you did. So 11 seconds remaining. Blair Taylor will get the football back. Now, you just In the way they're going, you might as well throw the down the field, the, the ball downfield. They're at the Whitehall 47. <laughs> I'm not, it looks like. <laughs> Devin McHugh is going back for a punt. <laughs> He's so far back. <laughs> comes dead the throw. Comes down this left side for Neetek, and it's a little too strong and complete. Stop the clock with six seconds remaining. They can do it again. One more chance to give her a heave down the field. It would be really hard for him to score there unless he could make McCune miss because McCune was cutting him off at the pass. Yeah. <laughs> and since all of the uh, defensive back was with him pretty much too. I think this will pro probably be the last play of the quarter. I'm not going to guarantee it, but no, probably. Not what we've had here tonight, you aren't. First in the high school football, one under 2.3, WHDL Whitehall, Wisconsin. Back the pass, comes across the middle, and is it caught? It is caught. Number 10. Down to Letcher to the... Did they get it? Did they get a timeout called quick enough, or is it the end of the half? It's not the clock up here that counts. It's the one that's out on the field. But the, the official, the back judge has that clock, if I'm not mistaken. But they gained 10 yards on the play, right? Yep. Thank you. Time was called immediately as soon as the players skidded to a stop. I like think I they're saying halftime. No, it's done. It's a done, done deal at halftime. It is Whitehall 7 and Blair Taylor Wildcats 6. So after a scoreless... First quarter, each team put up one towards the end of the second, uh, first half for our only scores in the game so far. And we are into the halftime here. We'll be back, take a look at our first half statistics, and we'll have a look at what's happening around the area as far as high school football here tonight in western Wisconsin, all part of the halftime show on 102.3 WHDL Whitehall, Wisconsin. You're watching High School Football on WTCO-TV. Tonight's High School Football game is brought to you through generous support of these WTCO supporters. Valley Bible Church is a source for biblical theology and the good word in Trempolo County. Join Pastor Roger Gallstead as he provides in-depth study into everyday scripture. 
Tune in to WTCO every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m., Friday at 7 p.m., and Saturday at 8 a.m. for further understanding of the Word of God. Valley Bible Church, a proud sponsor of WTCO Channel 18. TCC is proud to underwrite and support WTCO programming. TCC is a local technology company providing cable TV, internet, and telephone services along with phone systems, computer repair, and networking. We appreciate WTCO's dedication to the local programming and proudly carry WTCO on our cable system. Find more information about TCC at tccpro.net. WTCO TV is looking for sponsors for our programming. If you are interested, please visit sponsor.wtco.tv for more information. WTCO TV would like to thank WHTL Radio 102.3 FM for providing announcers for this game. Hello, I hope you are enjoying this high school football game. Did you know funds donated to WTCO TV help to fund our coverage of community events? We've been working hard this year to improve how we do things to bring events like this to you with different camera angles, graphics, and even live on TV and the internet. We hope to continue to cover events in this way to better serve our communities, but we can't do it without your help. You can donate to WTCO via check by mailing it to Trempolo County Courthouse Attention TV Studio, P.O. Box 67, Whitehall, Wisconsin, 54773, or donate online at donate.wtco.tv. We are also looking for business sponsors to help support this programming. For information on sponsoring WTCO TV, visit sponsor.wtco.tv. Thank you for watching. Do you miss the good old days of drive-in black and white movies? We can help! Saturday nights on WTCO, we have Vintage Drive-In Theater from 7 p.m. to midnight. We have amassed a huge collection of vintage movies to take you back to the simpler times of yesteryear. We hope to see you there Saturday nights from 7 p.m. to midnight on WTCO channel 18 and 618. Thanks for watching. This is your local community TV channel. Are you here watching a high school football game? Maybe your son or daughter is on stage performing in a school concert. Did you know community media centers cover all of these kinds of local events for you? So if you happen to miss something, call us. Email us. Check online to see if we were there. Or if you have a great idea for a show, let us know. What would you like to see on community TV? We can bring it to you. Or you can bring it to us. Many community media centers accept programs from their viewers. And many will even train you how to produce your own shows. Many welcome volunteers. So if you're looking for complete coverage of debates and elections, together, we got it covered. That band that you really liked from the Park Festival last week, whose name you just can't remember, together, we got it covered. We are your community media center. And together, we get the local beat covered. Strong media centers help build strong communities. We here at WTCO know how much you look forward to your favorite polka bands weeknights at six o'clock. Well, it's about to get even better. Get ready to jump into your polka time machines. We've dusted off our old VHS tapes to bring you Throwback Thursday. Every Thursday at 6 p.m., tune in for one whole hour of the best polka yesteryear has to offer. So put on those dancing shoes, strap on that leader hosen, and get ready for Throwback Thursdays at 6 p.m. on WTCO. WTCO TV has an online viewing portal, as well as Facebook and Twitter. There are two ways to get to our online viewing portal. 
The first is to go to co.trumpolo.wi.us and click on the live stream icon in the right corner of the county website. The other way is to go under departments and click on WTCO Media Center. On the bottom of our homepage, we have a button for information for watching on TCC cable, a button for watching live online, a button for watching video on demand online, and information for adding our Roku channel. To get to our Facebook and Twitter accounts, either click on the Facebook icon or the Twitter icon on the county website and look for WTCO's Facebook or Twitter links. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash WTCO 18 official and on Twitter by finding at WTCO TV. WTCO also has a YouTube channel. Simply go to YouTube and search for WTCO Trempolo County to see what we have available and to subscribe for updates when we add content. WTCO TV is available on Roku TVs and devices. It is easy to add WTCO to your Roku TV or Roku device. All you have to do is make sure the device is on and scroll down to search. Click over to the letters and start searching for Trempolo. That's T-R-E-M-P-E-A-L-E-A-U. The channel Trempolo Community Access TV will likely show up as you type. Click over to it and click OK on your remote. Then click Add Channel. If you click Home on your remote, you will see the icon for the channel in your listings. Now you have access to the WTCO live stream as you can see here. As well as our video on demand programming such as history files as you can see here. Thank you for adding WTCO on Roku. Okay. Is that, I'm the just interested in how is that the first one, first game you've done? Is the volleyball or yeah. two games? Oh, okay. I didn't throw it that many times, Marty. Anyway. Uh, Aiden is 6 of 18 for 101 uh, yards. He's thrown the lone interception. That was a 54-yard strike to Thorne, but he also has, excuse me, has two interceptions. So the Norse have uh, ran 31 offensive plays for 132 yards. Uh, penalties really hurt them in that second quarter as they ended up with uh, 45 yards with three major penalties, and one was offsetting or declined or or something there, but uh, so they have 55 yards and penalties total. Uh, one turnover, I think there was a fumble by uh, Blair Taylor, and then the two interceptions for the Norse. So there's your your halftime statistics, Mr. Little. Time of possession pretty even, uh, white out, uh, with 11:05 time on the clock, and Blair Taylor 12:55. So uh, that's pretty even time of possession. Like the score, seven six, white out leading here. We'll be back taking a look at what's happening in the area as far as high school football on WHDL.
It is the Wild on Horseman 7 and the Blair Taylor Wildcats. Six big games in the area here tonight. Start up in the Darling Conference. Uh, the two top teams there, uh, Pepin Hallman and Augusta, meeting up at Augusta tonight. Also tonight, Independence Gilmonton as the Leva Strum, Melrose Madrid, Cocker, Fountain City. In the Cooley Conference, the two top teams there meeting uh, Lacrosse Aquinas, playing host to Arcadia down at UW Lacrosse. Gaelic Triple is at Altoona, Westby at Blackover Falls. In the Cloverbelt Conference, uh, Stanley Boyd at Austin Fairchild, Oak Cliff Regis at Fall Creek. Elk Mound is at Duran, and Mondovi hosts Nielsville Granton. Alaska Luther is at Ithaca. In the uh, Mississippi Valley Conference, Alaska is at West Salem, Sparta at Holman, Tomat at Lacrosse Central. Superior at Eau Claire Memorial, Chippewa Falls, or that, that we turn over to the big rivers there with Superior at Eau Claire Memorial, Chippewa Falls at Rice Lake, Eau Claire North at Hudson and Menominee at New Richmond, non conference. Somerset is at Viroqua, and uh, River Falls is at Sun Prairie. And an eight man ball tonight, Lincoln on the road up at Chippewa Falls to take on the, the Max of McDonald. Here it is the Wild Norseman uh, leading by a point. Seven to six. I think last week there was one of the games that was ended up like Mondovi got beat by Stanley Boyd. I think it was 28-27. Extra point cost them a ball game there. So, yeah. So those extra points all so important. Never, never, never turn your head away from the special teams. They, 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 nope. come, in, they come in real handy sometimes. Here uh, the uh, Norse had the lead at seven to six. We'll be back. Second half kickoff coming up here on 102.3 WHTL Whitehall, Wisconsin. Next morning. And I guess uh, a young kid died a couple nights, a couple days ago in practice, 14-year-old kid. Welcome back to Blair Taylor Schools. Uh, we get ready to start the second half. Blair Taylor will start the second half with the football. 
You know, Marty, this, we, we talked about this on the way over, and you said you weren't sure what to expect without seeing either one. You thought it would be a competitive game, and it has. I mean, 7-6 to six has been a very competitive game. It just hasn't been real pretty. It's not been real pretty and not been real clean but as far as uh, turnovers and penalties, but um, it is, like you said, very competitive. A couple of squads pretty well. I'm on the different ends of things there, though, because what I'll uh, bring back, uh, was it 10 seniors from last year's squad? Something like that. I was talking to Coach Nering, and he said two starters on offense and three starters on defense. Yeah, they, they, lost, they, they lost a bunch of kids. They lost some good athletes, yeah. too, though. Yeah, they, they, uh, so they, this is a definite rebuilding time for them. We were looking at the numbers as we're sitting out here. And, and 45 uh, kids, maybe? Be, uh, Fifty kids you know, between the you know, two when spots. I was when I was in school at Osseo Fairchild, you you know, there's sixty kids out for football. My my senior year, which would have been what your freshman year, we took six, 58 or sixty kids that we dressed. You know, we took the freshmen and everybody up to show Osseo, and they came out with a whole bunch <laughs> more than we had. I, I, I legitimately, there was probably a hundred and twenty kids dressed that wow. night between the two schools. And here we've got, like I said, around 50. I mean, it's it's numbers aren't there right now. About ready to roll. Looks like the back trio back for the yeah. The uh, Mr. Sluga going to do the kicking yep. duties here for Whitehall. Okay, that'll come to looks like number three. Cox lane up the right side, and he is he hesitated, <laughs> take a little stutter step, and then paid for it at the 30 yard line. And, you know, that is the one you know, we're looking for positives here tonight. I've seen some great plays on defense where they put the shoulder down and they wrap on both sides. You know, we've talked about not tackling being a lost art. There, there's been some decent tackling here tonight. So I'll Mr. Get, Fremstead yeah. isn't real happy about it. But. Well, I guess they go over first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. He and Fremstead will lead them out. They started their first two drives of the game on the 31-yard line. Sharamic in the backfield with him. And then everybody else... The three on the left and one split wide to the right. Remus is looking over to his coach. He's going, oh, do you want me to throw again? No. <laughs> oh, my. Scoyan. <laughs> he he almost met him he as he got, got the, the ball, <laughs> didn't he? He almost got the hand up as, as Shramick took the football. He's going to be dropped back to the Loss of four. Five? Should I wait till they set the ball? It's down the... Uh, maybe it was at 54. Four. From the 27. Man, that, that was quite a job by Mr. Shramick just to hold on to that oh. ball, Marty. Uh, it looks like the Norse are going to bring some pressure. They've got, <laughs> they got they everybody got, within six yards yeah. of the bo you know, the line of scrimmage here. There is literally nine guys in the box. And he perhaps get all kinds of pressure. Oh, and he got away from one, but then there was two more. Dropped all the way back to the 15-yard line. Wow. That'll bring it up. Oh, my gosh. How much did he lose there? I'm going to say the 16, so 10 yards. No loss. Bring up third down and 24. That's a long ways, is all I know. Coach, you got to play for this? <laughs> Third and 24? Well, I don't think so. And he's getting pressure again. He's going to come up the right side, and he's going to come out to about the. He gained some yardage there, but. 22 yard line pickup of about six or seven, I would guess, huh? Even if it is, seven, I think six is the max we can give them there, but it's still. Fourth down at about 20. Yeah, a long 20. Back deep, Thorne and McEwen. For what? I think Rogs did on the punt here. For uh, Blair Taylor. Helicopter type punt, and it's a fair catch called for by McEwen. About the 47 yard line of Whitehall. One of the better starting positions they've had all night. Wait for him to mark it, of course, officially because I just never know. There hasn't been real good continuity between the chain gang and the officials tonight. And I, I did find out here at halftime that this crew 
is missing or that, that it's two crews put together for tonight, uh, that may explain that some explain of the, uh, of you know, you know yep. why they're not hitting on all cylinders. 46, I guess, is where they marked yep. it, huh? Yeah, by the, to the 46-yard line, first and 10 for the Norseman is... Aiden Zala brings him out, hands it off to oh, Thorne, and Thorne met, got met immediately too. by number 22, and that is uh, Jackson Shramick. And no gain. No gain. Second and 10 from the 46. This is very, very reminiscent of the way the football game started. Lots of hitting, not much offense. Second and 10. For the Norse. I formation behind Sensala, Einstein, uh, Kleinhans, and Thorne pedal up the middle to uh, Klein, Kleinhans and Kleinhans. Yeah, maybe a yard. We'll wait and see again where they mark it here, but it worked a, a lot. That's all. That's all I know. Yeah, out to the 47 to get a yard. It'll be third down and nine. Clock at 8:50 and running here in the third quarter. Seven to six, the lead for Weddle. Under the line of scrimmage. Out of the shotgun. Little pitch to uh, Thorne on the inside of the pitch, and he's going to be across midfield and close to the 46 yard, yard line of. Man, I thought there might have been some room outside with his speed, but he he's seen it differently. He cut it up. Pick up of about six yards. Bring up a fourth down and two. More or less, kind of, sort of. Three. And outside the 40, uh, about the 47 yard line, got to get to the 44. So. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. Boy, yardage has been so hard to come by tonight for both squads. Hand off up the middle, Thorne, and he's got it, Thorne I believe. Huh? So across the right side, side the 45 down to the 43 yard line. It's amazing what you can do when you don't get hit until it's the line of scrimmage or a little bit later, huh? Give him four on that. Yep, it's first out of 10. And you put your head down and go straight, straight forward. That helps a lot, too. Just saying. I know, you're right, but it just, he's, most of the backs on both sides tonight have been getting, they're, they're evading tackle, tacklers in the backfield. First and 10 for the Norse, 43-yard line of Blair Taylor. Fake the handoff, pitch it out to Thorne. Thorne cuts it back, and again, like you said, in the backfield back there waiting for him was Colton Coxling. And he did pick up got a, yard. a yard, second down and nine, and that's a pretty good job because, <laughs> like you said, <laughs> they're met in the backfield. Game today brought to you in part by West Central Insurance Services. Well, you know, they've been doing that for... Over a hundred years. They're, they've been around. 1841. That's a long time ago. Almost 108. That's 180 years. It's a long wow. time ago. West Central Insurance Services. Second and nine. I check out the uh, line of scrimmage. Everybody's packed in kind of tight there. Long receiver McEwen out to the right and they hand it off to Thorne up the middle and Thorne. To about the 36-yard line pickup. Looks like about five yards maybe on that carry away and see again where they set it down. The officials did a nice job there because Thorne actually rolled over a blocker and a tackler, and, and that's the yardage he should have gotten. You give him five on that then? Yeah, third down at about four. Four. Looks like that looks, it's starting to look like a Kleinhans football game. Everybody in tight, one wide receiver out, and we're going to power the football forwards. We're going forward now. Well, you got the big Kleinheins kid in front of Thorne, and they, they're running it. Oh, they just give it off the middle to Klein on the Threw a curveball there to the 34-yard line. Pick up of a couple. It's going to go fourth down and short, about a yard or so. Imagine if they went for it a little bit longer yeah. and a little bit further back. They're going for it here, wouldn't you think? Yeah, third and one from the 34. I would... Be roughly surprised if they didn't. Clock rolls with five and a half minutes to play here. Third quarter, seven to six. Wide out leading Blair Taylor. High formation behind Sanzala. Big play here early in this second half. Little jump in there. Oh, okay. Sanzala going to keep it himself. Oh, nice play. Powers down to He's the He's seen something 30. there. Yep. 
picks up three yards and a first down. I thought it was three yards and a call to dust. <laughs> Game today brought to you apart by eight contractors of Blair and Ettrick. Stop and see Rod and Keith for all of your land and site improvement. And they do snow removal. Just to remind <laughs> you that we're in fall now. Yeah, hey, you con- and Mike are tough on that. Hey, contractors of Blair and Ettrick. The other morning, Mike's on here. It was 39 degrees. That's only seven degrees from making ice. <laughs> Get out of that ice fishing. I just want snow. First and send just outside the 30 yard line, pitch to Thorne back there. We got, we got flags flags down. All I over. think somebody flinched on the offensive line. I'm not sure, but I I thought I saw an, an eagle. Yeah, that's what they're saying illegal motion. I'll back him up five yards and make it first and 15. Or do, you, or, or do you not take it if it was no game? Yeah, I think you got to take it. They've only been gaining about two yards of play, so maybe you're right. Okay, today brought you part by Holton Sporting Goods Water. Tom Winge and the folks there got a little bit of for everybody. The outdoorsman, if you're just looking for some visual stuff, they got a full visual optics section. They've got a full footwear section, clothing section. If you're into bow and arrows, they've got an inside target. If you're into guns, they've got that. Fishing, they can help you out there. Ice fishing, I'm sure they can help you out with. <laughs> Holton Sporting Goods, what all? Mike, he's thinking of you. <laughs> First and 15 for the Norseman. Clock rolls with four and a half to play here in this third quarter. Just outside the 35-yard line. Solid rolls to the right side, looking downfield. Comes up for McEwen. McEwen makes the grab inside the 20 and is run out of bounds. And about the... 17, so that's a pickup of 18 yards and a first down. I tell you what, McCune and Fremstead have been going at it here when uh, Fremstead's on defense. That's that's a two good athletes. That's a pretty good battle going on there tonight. Yes, it is. First and 10, 17 yard out of Blair Taylor. What Out of the huddle. Their W's, did they get new helmets? Kind of got, got a gold glow to them. It's the lighting. It's the lighting. <laughs> All under center. Hand off to Thorne. Right side. Big oh, ball. Man, that's the to the 15, one. to the 10, to the 5, and into the end him. zone. 18 yards out. 17 yard touchdown 17. run. Makes it 13 to 6. The lead for the Norse. And the extra point. Pending. And uh, looks like they are going to kick it again. Yes, they are. Have McEwen on to kick out of the placement of uh, Seth Lambeck. Lambeck waits for the snap. There it is. Down, kick is on the way up, and kick is good to make it 14 to 6. The lead for the Wild Norseman. Kickoff coming up by WHDL. Welcome back to Blair Taylor Schools as the Waddle Norseman go 54 yards, 10 plays, 535 off the clock. Scoring a 17-yard touchdown run by Jonathan Thorne. The extra point by Devin McEwen. 14-6, the lead for the Norseman. Number eight, number 24. Number three. And number three, so it'll be Gunnar Coxling. Co- Co- Colton Coxling. Nisley. And Nisley. I'll be Ethan Nisley in the middle. So flanked by Coxlings. Yep. Kickoff coming from Sluga. Sluga. It's a tough deep man. Nisley at about the 15 yard line to the 20, 25. Cuts his way right and is brought down close to the 30 yard we line. We got flags. Penalty flags are flying. These are flying. 
Can you believe a block in the back, sir? Can uh, you? Uh, on, a, on a kick return? Hardly. Every hey, level. They, they would have started at where? No, it would have been, it'd have been the 35, 36. Yep. Back it no, up it to the. It would have been the 31. <laughs> I guess it took the 21 yard line. 21. First and 10. Blair Taylor lined up and ready to go. Knee tech way out on the left here. See what the adjustments are made by the blur to the Wildcats from that last uh, drive. They didn't do the whole lot there. They get a little pitch out to nice block. Trauma got a big block. He's across the 30 and out to about the 33 or 34 yard line. Yeah, 30, 12, 33 to pick up a 12. First and 10, their own 33 yard line. Clock at 3:55 and running here. They're in the third quarter. Went up 14 to 6. First and 10 at the 33 for the Wildcats. Pitch comes up to Shramak the right side this time. Cuts it back up across to the there 35. Wasn't near as much room this time. So they set down the football here. Going to be the 35 again. I'll have a couple. Second down and eight. Game today brought to you part by Greenleaf Trucking Incorporated Taylor. They started out with just a couple of dumb trucks. Now they got all kinds of them everywhere you see Fleets them. Of trucks. Move anything for you. Greenleaf Trucking Incorporated of Taylor. Hempstead takes the snap, rolls to his left. Now gets some pressure. Oh, to the right side. Room. It opens up. Nice. Gets shake past the score and he's down the middle field to the 40. Comes to the left side and he's being tripped up at the 40 yard line. So a pickup there. Uh, 15, 25 yards on the pickup. Huge play for the Wildcats. First and 10 at the 40 yard line of Whitehall. Clock stops at 2.38 while they set the chains. Now they'll fire it up. Long cast to the line of scrimmage. Trauma going back in the backfield. Fumble the There's snap. A oh! And it bounces <laughs> right up to, to Trauma. <laughs> Better to be lucky than good some days, Marty. Well, he gets back to the line. Well, you're going to have to give him a yard because he got down. I don't think so. Yeah. No gain to be second down at 10. You know that old saying, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good? Yes. I, I think we just went, wit, witnessed one that. of them. If it was Notre Dame saying I would play, it would have been the luck of the Irish <laughs> in that one because that bounced straight back up to him, bouncing around on the floor, ground, and bloop. That oblong football takes a footy bounce sometimes. And off to Shramick this time. He almost lost it on the handoff. He'd get down to the 35-yard line. Pick it up for about five. It'll be second down and or third down and five, I should say. Minute and a half to go here in this third quarter. 14-6, the lead for the Little Norseman. Look over to the sideline, get the call. Now they'll come up. Look at their wristbands, and they're ready to roll. So a shotgun from Stood back to pass. Now he gets some pressure. Oh, he got Shakes away. Shakes the man. Comes onto this left side and gets hit hard at about the 35. Going to stay in bounds and maybe the 34-yard line. A gain of one. That's an awful price to play for one-yard get pickup. Bring about fourth down and four. Got to think they're going for it here, don't yeah. you? Clock at 40 seconds and running. So they're going to have to run a play here before the end of the quarter. 34 yard line. Need to get the 30. A little confusion by the Wildcats looking over to the sideline. They may end up having to call a timeout. Now the back judge, had, there his hand is up. up. Hasn't started counting yet, so they still got at least five seconds. There's five. No, nope, they got the snap off. Some pressure now, and Fremstead takes off. Oh, the he fumbled the ball. Bopped loose, and up with it is 
number 42, and that is Eric Kleinheims with the recovery. They lost, what, about five yards on that mm -hmm. mess? I looked at about the 40-yard line, and that's where the Norse will take over. Seven seconds from in here in this third quarter. be interesting to see here now if uh, the Norse go back to that running game that was quite successful to start the third quarter. Officially mark it at the 39-yard line, first and 10 for the Norse. Aiden Zala bring him to the line of scrimmage. Eye formation behind him. Klein Hunts in the fullback spot and Jonathan Thorne at the uh, dot of the eye. Thorne with a hand up right side and another good hold there. Out to about the 44, maybe the 45 yard line and that'll end the first half. Or the third quarter I should say. Pick up a five will be uh, second and five when we return to action. It is the uh, Weddell Norseman with the lead, 14-6. to six. They have the football. More action coming up on WHDL. Welcome back to Blair Taylor Schools as we start this fourth quarter. Waddle and Norseman have it second and five at their own 44-yard uh, line. Just shy of the 45. Ains and Salo bring the Norse to the line of scrimmage. They lead 14-6 to six, heading into this final 12-minute period. And Salo up under center. Hands it off to Kleinon. Kleinon's up the middle. Powers his way close to the first down at about the 49-yard line. And, I mean, he put the head down and said, well, he's going this way now. It's a five-yard pickup and a first down at the 49-yard line. Game today brought to you in part by Oakwood Banks in Pigeon Falls, Whitehall, Augusta, and Eau Claire. For all of your banking needs, stop and see them at the Oakwood Banks. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. Just shy. I mean, just shy of the 50-yard line. <laughs> Up under center is Sinsala. High formation behind him. Wing backs going on the right side. Hand off to Thorne. Thorne bounces off. One man does make his way into Blair Taylor territory. Short game. Picks up... A yard, it'll be second down and nine. Again today brought to you in part by the Subways in Whitehall, Arcadia, Gasio, and Galesville for all of your sub needs. I had my tuna sub. I'm so about happy they're hoping again in Whitehall. They had some remodeling done and <laughs> other things going on, so they're finally open. Hey, if you got a party or gathering, they also do catering with the party subs and party platters. Subways, Whitehall, Arcadia, Gasio, and Galesville. Salabram with the line of scrimmage, second down and nine. The 49-yard line of Blair Taylor. There's a fumble. It's going fumbles the football in the handoff. And the Blair Taylor Wildcats recover. Isaiah Washington. He now owns an interception and the fumble recovery. Yes, it was. So with 10.52 remaining, the Blair Taylor Wildcats big, get the big turnover. Did they lose a couple yards on that exchange? Yeah. Okay. About three. Take over at the Whitehall. 47. He burps the bring line of scrimmage out of the shotgun. Takes the handoff, looks to pass, gets some pressure. Throws up a jump ball, and it's picked off. 
Is that McEwen or Sinsala? It was one of the other three or five. I couldn't see that far sideline over there. It is Sinsala. So trading of uh, turnovers. Yeah, and Sinsala feels good because he got it back. <laughs> So, with 10.44, <laughs> the Norris get it back. And where are they going to mark it? Right at midfield. <laughs> no, now they set it back to the 49. Didn't like midfield stripe, evidently. Going to move it back. See how they are? First and 10 at their own 49-yard line. No, it's all about bring them back to the line of scrimmage. Tried running that jet sweep with the wing back, and I don't know if the handoff was short or if the timing was off or what it was in there. Since Ala stepped on the foot, because uh, he comes down back and pitches it back to Thorne, and Thorne oh. threw the hole quickly down to the 40 yard line. Young Mr. Neetek saved a touchdown there. Good tackling. He wrapped, he put his shoulder down and wrapped. Mark the 39, so a pickup of 11. 11. Make it, yeah, 12. From the 49 to the 39. 49 on Boydell to the 39. Of Blair Taylor, first and 10, just uh, shy of the 39, or 39, yeah. First and 10 as they come to the line of scrimmage. High formation, McEwen split wide to the left. He's going on a wing to the left side. And off of the middle, Kleinons, Kleinons powers to the 36 yard line, a pickup of about three, maybe four yards. Again, we we'll wait for the official to put down the football. You give him four there, Marty? Uh, no, uh, three to the 46. Okay. Second and seven. Clock is becoming important now at 9.35. And A rain. score here would yep. really make it look tough for the Wildcats. I formation behind Sinsala. He's got that jet sweep again to Scoyan. Scoyan, right side, waits for his blocker, turns it upfield, inside the 30 to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! And there's a flag. Don't get excited. For a big man, once he got out in the open, he kind of rambled there, didn't he? That's going to negate a 36-yard touchdown run, and that's going to hurt. Yeah, that could hurt down the long run, big time. How many have like dropped at about the 28-yard line? Is it from the spot of the fall or from the line of scrimmage? Out of the fall, so it's back to the 36-yard line. Gain of one. <laughs> Sick down and well, six. no, it's not a gain because they didn't. It, no. <laughs> there wasn't no play. No. Second and six. So how? Okay, it's he a penalty, the, and we gained a yard on it, huh? <laughs> it's a team team yard. There, there we go. I'll I'll go with you on that. I I can buy that. I buy what you're selling. Looks <laughs> ready at nine oh five. Fish comes to Thorn. Comes it back inside to the thirty five and whirls his way down. Maybe the thirty three, possibly the thirty two yard line. Wait. Time for them to set down the football. And that is the 32-yard line pickup of, man, four, three, three. They're down in three. Yeah, I guess they got the one yard on uh, what you yep. call it. Third and three from just outside the 32-yard line. Got to figure it's four down territory here, don't you, Marty? Yep. They got just inside the 30 is where they got to get to the first down there, just outside. Just inside the 33, there's a handoff in the middle of Thorn and Thorn. Not well, second Whoa. effort, he does. Gets Easily. It to the 28-yard line, pick up there of about five yards and a first down. He disappeared in the pile, and then he reappeared. I'm well, only going to mark him at the 29. I'm going to learn to shut my mouth with these guys until they <laughs> set the football down. And, and, you know, it's just – it's. You can tell it's, it's that, that they haven't worked together. Yeah. But now, you know, now that you fit, fit, yeah, here. But the chain gang isn't working with them either. They're setting <laughs> their sticks way before the officials are setting the ball. 
Salatella. This is a joint effort. <laughs> the paper the line is given at 7.45 or many. Hand off of the middle to Glynons and Glynons. And to about the 26 or 27. We'll give them the 27 again of a couple. Second down in about eight, I do believe. Game today brought to you in part by Powell Construction of Weddell. 20 years of experience. They do free estimates. Give them a call, 715-299-2172. Powell Construction of Whitehall. Those are the kind of guys I need because I am useless with tools. <laughs> Handyman, not. Second and eight clock rolls at 7.05. Our man in here in the football game. And up, nope, going to keep it since Hal Sasala to the outside. Oh, he should have just yep. cut it up there. And he's going to get run out of bounds. Number five, Aiden Sasala keeps it himself on the option play. Scampers out of bounds. Inside the I think they already decided that they're going for it, so it was pushed out of bounds by number two, Jackson Trump. Think of about, what, three? We're going to third down and four. Oh. Okay. Third and four from the third. 24-yard line. <laughs> and they're, uh, they're in four-down territory here, yeah. I think, the rest of the game, aren't they? Pretty well, I much. shouldn't say that, but yeah. in this situation, this they situation. definitely Tell this drive ends anyway there. Definitely. Clock at 6.57 as he stepped out of bounds. And up the thorn, stutter steps, makes his way. Boy, he gains on his own. Side he? down to the 20-yard line. He's close. I don't know if he's got it. Yep, it is. Give him a pick up a four to first down of the 20. Game today brought to you in part by Berkshire Hawthorne Home Services, Lo uh, Lovejoy Realty, B uh, Blair, Owen Berg, <laughs> the man there. Is that a whole that, mouthful that's for That's a buddy? mouthful. <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Lovejoy Realty, of Blair, Owen Berg. The biggest thing here is Whitehall's really chewing up that clock, too. If they do score here, it's really going to make it tough on the Wildcats. Yeah, on four minutes off of the clock here in this possession. First and ten at the 20. I formation. Give it on the sweep to Scoyan again. This time to the left side. Cuts it back up inside. He's going to be brought down at about the 17 or 18 yard line. Looks like the two. Looks like the 17, doesn't it? 18, 19. Two. Three. That says two on over there, but it was at the 20, and it's now it's at the 17. Is it not at the 17-yard yeah. line? Okay. Just, yeah, like just, I said, they are not uh, in sync here real well. The one thing that is in sync is that clock is running as it's now under six minutes. It'll be down below. Well, it is down to 530-something already now before they snap the ball. And of the thorn, thorn. Oh, he made a nice cut. Inside the 15. Down to the 10. Really close to the first down again. He needed seven. He got six and a half, so give him six. Bring him third and a yard. Clock rolls at 5.10, so it'll be under five minutes when they snap the football here this time. Norse leading 14 to 6. <coughs> Since I'll bring him to the line of scrimmage. Snaps and turns to Klein Hines and Klein Hines. Klein Hines uh, inside the 10 to about the 9, a gain of a couple of yards and a first down. Basically had to lean forward with <laughs> that long, that big frame. Ryan Ryan. I get it about the nine-yard line, first and goal. Game today brought to you in part by the Blair Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, the brand is a great brand. Great uh, products and great price and the great friendly service in downtown. Blair, they even deliver. Blair Health Mart Pharmacy. I know because I see their Jeep. I wave to it all the time. It's a little white Jeep. I say, hi, how's it going? First and goal at the nine. Then we get, I think, Klein Hines rocked. Legal procedure will back him up to the 14-yard line and make it first and goal from the 14. Do you realize, Marty, that Blair Taylor has run one play this quarter and that was an interception? Yep. Wow. The time of possession has really got to be tilting towards Whitehall right now as they've had it Yeah, because they about seven and a half of the eight minutes here. <laughs> And 
Is it first and goal from the 14 here now? Yes, it is. Clock rolling. It'll be at four minutes from the snap. Pitch to Thorne. Comes to the right side. Turns it back, and he's going to be brought down. Little or no gain. Yep. Wait for the fellow from the side there to come in and put down the football. Yeah. No gain. Second down and four goal at the 14. Game today brought to you proper Gross Motors, Black River Falls. <laughs> if you're looking for an American-made vehicle, whether it's a Ford or a Chrysler or a Jeep or um, Chevy or Jim C or a Ram or whatever, whatever American-made, they can pretty much cover you there. That on their lot at the, one of their sister lots, Gross Motors, Black River Falls. They cover the gambit, you're saying? Yes. Of American-made cars. So, well, you should be buying. Just saying. Back to pass. This is only going to throw it in the end zone. That's going to yeah, be picked off by off. Fe Kane Fremstead in about the four. He was backpedaling, and I mean, it just that didn't have much of a chance. It's his third interception here tonight. So the turnover gives it back to the Wildcats with 3.05 remaining, but they're going to be deep in their own territory. Yes, they are. But one big play, and they can have this game tied. Where are we gonna set it down at about the five? I think I heard a score with Augusta twenty-two. I'm a pep and twenty. Is that a final? Wow, that is a final. Cool. Augusta remains undefeated. You know, I'm, I'm kind of partial there since my cousin's daughter's husband coaches. <laughs> You, had, you actually went to school in Augusta for a year. I did Dude. for two years. Went two to years. school in Augusta. Second middle, second grade, they pulled me and put me in Dossie, Fairchild. Hand off up the middle. Football oh, through into the end zone. Is that a safety? Yes, it is. Frumstead covered. Be scoring. Scoring to the credit for the safety. Okay. So now they've had two plays in the fourth quarter, a fumble and a interception, and the fumble was recovered for a safety. <laughs> well, Fremston did a nice job there because it really could have been a touchdown just as easy. Yes, he could have. So they'll get the football back. Now they have their choice of kicking or punting here, don't they? That they do. They can kick, kick or, or punt. punt. Game today brought to you in part by MPF Blair from uh, producer to consumer, your milk marketing experts. Now, we've been telling people for years and years and years and years how good the cheese is at AMPI. But now they're finally catching up with the rest of the world. They're getting national and international medals and awards. And what we knew 30 years ago, they're catching up to now. Yeah, they're finally letting everybody else know what we already knew. AMPI of Blair. Well, sometimes the world catches on a little slow. Yeah, you know these folks in West Central Wisconsin. We're pretty on top of it. We're on we? top of stuff here in West Central Wisconsin, no doubt about it. Game today brought to you in part by Tricor Insurance of Blair, Arcadia, and Black River Falls. See Fred here in Blair, Amy and Arcadia, and Todd at Black River Falls for all of your insurance needs at home. I have it there. Auto, life, farm, they do a little bit of everything. Tricor Insurance of Blair, Arcadia, and Black River Falls. No, it's from their own 20, correct? Yep. 16 to 6, so that makes it a two point, two, uh, Score game, and with just three minutes remaining, and they have to relinquish the football. Yeah. Well, you could try an onside kick, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you are just yeah. about a desperation mode at three minutes remaining. That's here. right. It's only three exactly, huh? And they're going to try the onside kick, and uh, somebody just did the right thing. They yeah. just fell on it. And Coach Klonheins is going, just like I told him to do it. <laughs> 65. Adam Kleinons. Well, imagine that. The coach's kid <laughs> knows, knows what to do with it. Huh. Shocking. Just shocking. So the White Owl will get it right back with three minutes remaining. Blair's got all of their timeouts, and I imagine they will be uh, pretty much forced to use them here on defense, won't they? 36-yard line. Of Blair Taylor. No rest for the defense for the Wildcats. And they give it to Scoyne again on that end around or jet sweep for the. Yeah, but he got out of bounds. So that's. He'll be down around the 30 yard line. Pushed out of bounds near the 30 yard line. 
We'll wait for them to set the football down, and it's going to be at the 30. A pick up a six will be second down and four. Like you said, stop the clock at 2.52, so that's a little help. Blair Taylor do has, does have all three eye timeouts left, so. I'm sure that'll be a conversation in, in film <laughs> on Monday or Tuesday whenever they run their film. Yep. I hated that back in the old days when they had the, the film and the, the coach Mach be forward and backward. Grumps is sitting here by himself on the bench. He's been playing defense all night tonight up until now. They're going to run the option, pitch back the Thorn. Thorn makes a nice cut back inside to keep from losing. Well, you know, he's not that big of a guy, but to the 26 yard line. He'll be awful close to that first, first down. Give him a pick up a three. It'll be third down or second down. Make it third down and one, right? Yeah, third. You decided what you want it to be? Yeah, well, I was looking at the side marker, and he hadn't changed it yet, and then I went, no, it's third down. And time I'm going to be called by the Blair Taylor Wildcats. Tell you, our game today brought to you in part by Corp Credit Union. They're located in Galesville, Black River Falls, Melrose, Strum, Fall Creek, loans, savings, uh, business loans, small business loans. They're really up on that stuff. If you're looking to start a small business, see them at Cope Credit Union, Galesville, Black River Falls, Melrose, Strum, and Fall Creek. And Simmons Roofing of Alma Center and uh, Blair. Uh, they do all kinds of roofing, including the traditional tar. They do steel and aluminum. And they do some fascia and siding work as well. See them at Simmons Roofing of Blair and Alma Center. So it's a situation of looking rather gloomy, gloomy for the home team right now at this point in time. Down by 10 points with 2.27 remaining in the football game here on Water Drew 2.3 WHDL Waddle, Wisconsin. And the Waddle Norseman with the football on third down and short. If they come, come up with the first down here, do you keep calling the timeouts because yeah, you only got two left? Maybe take this one and call it, call it a night and. That doesn't look good. That uh, trainer is working on, I think, the. I thought it was the hand of uh, Premstead, but maybe not. Maybe he's just wore out. <laughs> While the kid's <laughs> going to sleep well tonight. As many hits as he took, he may just be Man. wore out. And like we've said all game, Marty, they weren't just love taps. He got hit multiple times. It's all to bring him to the line of scrimmage, third and one. He'll take it himself. And keeps running, and he's going to score all the way to the end zone. Aiden Zala from 27, 27 yards out. 27-yard TD run. Broke that first line of defense, and then it was all open for that for Aiden Zala. Everybody crowding up, try to. Stop yep. That's one of them where if they bust it, yep. it's usually ouch. 22 to 6. Extra point attempt now by Devin McCune out of the hold of uh, Seth Lambeck. Snap down and up, and it is no good. So it remains 22 to 6, the lead for the Norse. Each quarterback has thrown once here in the fourth quarter, and they've completed them. The problem is they've completed them to the wrong side, <laughs> both of them. Well, Blair Taylor has had two offensive plays in the fourth quarter. One was that interception by the uh, quarterback, Fremsted. And the other one ended up being a safety where Frems did make a great move and, and, and fell on the ball in the uh, end zone before uh, giving up the touchdown to the Norse. Norseman go 36 yards in three plays, 40 seconds off the clock, scoring a 27-yard touchdown run by Adam Aiden Sinsala. Extra point for McCune, no good. 22 to 6 the score. And uh, just two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this football game. Back deep are the Coxlings and Nasley. And kicking off will be Colton Slugup, 44. 
From the right side to Coxling. That is number three, Gunner, up the right left sideline. Out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. We're going to have a new quarterback, I think, too, because Fremstead has remained seated here with the trainer. So 220 remaining. First and 10. At their own 32, 33, which is it? 37. Yeah. Thir no, 32. Who's coming at quarterback? I can't see. Number I, 10? It could be. That would be Colton Lutcher. Hand off up the middle to number 22. Jackson Schrammick out to about the 41-yard line. Gain a nine. Pick up a nine and be second down and one. Hey, they got to play in the quarter without a turnover. Not trying to be smart, Alki, but that's been tough. No, not either. I mean, that's just it's just not gone their way here in this fourth quarter. The run clock runs at a minute forty remaining. Letcher out of the shotgun. And an inside little oh. hand up, a pump to number five. Oh, on the left twenty-five right side, or twenty-five. And that is uh, Gabe Armitage and Armitage from the 31 of his, Blair Taylor to the 39-yard line. So that's 11 and, and 29, so that'd be 40. That was from the 41, right? Oh, yeah. 9 and nine and 11 is yeah, 20. 20. I didn't think it was that far. First and 10. And off to... Shramick and Shramick met driven backwards. Yeah, they had a face mask. Yeah, yeah. On the tackle, someone got their hands up into the face mask there. Fifteen yard penalty. Somebody's down for Whitehall in the backfield and defensive backfield there too. 42. Kleinheim's got up on his own, slow, but he's heading. Quarterback Aiden Sasala is heading, <laughs> walking him to the sidelines. He's like, I don't want to come off. Which way is the football field? <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> I, that was one of my favorite commercials, I think, on TV. Do you know what you're doing? Playing football. Do you know where you are? New York. Do you know who you are? I'm Batman. <laughs> Letcher, pack the pass, comes down the left side to open out there, and the pass uh, is caught oh, wow. by number two. Oh, Knee tech. Knee tech. From Letcher. Yeah, from 23 uh, yards up. 23-yard TD pass. That one from Lutcher. Colton Lutcher. To Zachary Nitek. Older brother Josh held the rushing record here career for Blair Taylor for a while, I believe. Two-point conversion. Coming here. Stromick in the backfield. No motion. Goes Armitage. High snap. Pitch back to Stromick to the left side. Turns it up and in for the two point conversion. Is uh, Jackson. Stromick. Two point conversion. Makes it 22 14. All of a sudden, we're back to a football game. As they is just 57 seconds left. That's the that's the problem. Huh? Three plays. They go 68 yards and use 23 seconds 
No, a minute and 23 seconds. Did I hear him say Bangor got beat tonight? I'm not sure. I was kind of... You were busy? Trying to do my math and it's not working well. <laughs> I was right. I'm guessing we're going to see the onside kick again is what I'm guessing. I would be surprised if we didn't, though. As they, uh, How big could that missed extra point be right now? <laughs> <laughs> Huge. If you're, especially if you're a Whitehall fan because then would, they could beat you with a two-point conversion if, you, if they'd have hit that. All all they can do is tie it up. Onside kick and kicking off is number five, Colton Bouch. They had the guy next to him actually kick it last time, I thought. And he's going to do it again. And it's going to be a little dribbler. It's up a little bit short, but Weddle drops on it. A little ball at the, in the player territory end of the field. With 57 seconds left, have that little time run off the clock. Uh, you had to have something run. I mean, 47, <laughs> seven yard line. <laughs> kind of hard to figure out how you had a live play. Two in timeouts time. left, so they're going to stop the clock, I'm sure, a couple of times here now with an eight point deficit. Oh, yeah. You just never know what can happen here. Well, I was watching a high school game on one of the four-letter networks here the other night, a high school game in Texas, and the team was down by 17 with a, 50, a minute seven to go, and they ended up winning in regulation, wow. three touchdowns. Two successful onside kicks, one long run and one long pass after the touchdown, and the other team kind of looked like they were in shock, Marty. <laughs> I would have been. Uh, we get a delay a game call. It's going to cost the Norse five. They've had more than their fair share of penalties tonight, so back back out of their end of the field to the forty eight. And they'll try this again. And just looking to run off the, the football right here and just kinda get done with the thing, Thorn off the middle. I don't think he got the midfield stripe. Waiting for him to unfold things there. Give them two? Yeah, give them two. They did give them the stripes. So. Time out taken by the Lurtel Wildcats with 52 seconds remaining here in the football game. And the Norsemen leading 22 to 14. Yeah. Yeah. Next football for us is next Friday. We'll go up to the Clover Belt Conference. We'll be in Osseo as the Osseo Fairchild Thunder play host to the Duran Panthers. Duran got a pretty solid team this year, don't they? I do believe so. They give Regis, probably Regis' biggest tussle of the year, 36-26. They I didn't get a them. chance to ask you this today, and being we're in the timeout here, were you a little impressed with the Osseo Fairchild girls last night losing what was it, 25-23, 26-24 in the first two sets, then coming back and, and beating three. Regis in Regis? In Regis. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's to show us some character there on your team. Well, um, you got some senior leadership there. Yeah. Well, they, they, beat, they beat the superstars in the area if it wasn't for Fall Creek right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fall Creek is just that much tougher there. But that was a five-game set in yeah. Osseo Fairchild losing to them the other night too, wasn't it? Yep, so if things work out that like they did last year, we could see both of them again in the state. state. <laughs> they went different ways in the sectional, so. As they get back to action here, since Sala could keep it himself and drive it inside the 45 down to about the 44-yard line. Number five, Aiden see from the mark, but it looks like about a six-yard pickup. And number 66, up a... Third down. And uh, they're at the 44 to get to the 37. Nine. Oh, no, 38. Time on Clyde Billy Taylor, their final time out with 46 seconds remaining. They can't have that chain stretched out the right way because it definitely looks like it's <laughs> three yards. It looks like it's on the 47 year, and it looks like it's on the 38. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shut up now, Marty. 
I had a mark as of where they started. For those drive was at the 47, but my eyes may have deceived me again. Volleyball Tuesday night, we're in the Derlin Conference. We'll get our first look at the Augusta Beavers as they're in town to take on the Whitehall Norsemen on Tuesday night. Then we got another one on Thursday night. And I'm right off the top of my head, just kind of lost where we're going there. Uh, we have got Whitehall at Independence. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what you, it don't matter what the records no. are there. That's a barn burner usually. Third and about seven for the Norse. And again, since is going to keep it dry forward down to about the 41 yard line. Pick up of about four yards, three yards, four, four. Third and three. No one can stop the clock. It's rolling at 29, 28, 27. Do they got to snap it here? I think they got to take one more snap in the knee. I think. No, the back judge has already walked up and said, no, we, we did not set the clock, set the play, so that will be it. And I'll give you a final score of the Waddle Norseman, 22, and the Blair Taylor Wildcats, 14. So it got interesting towards the end again, and a very close football game all the way through. We'll be back, take a look at our game numbers, and we'll look at the records for these two ball clubs, where they're playing next, all part of the post-game show. And of course... Our Napa Parts of Performance player of the game from Napa Parts of Performance of Blair and Independence. That's all coming up on the post game show on WHTL. Thank you for attending.